Good morning. Imagine for a moment that you are all inventors, engineers, and you've been given the task of creating a robot that exists to make sad people happy. What skills and talents would you give this robot? Perhaps you teach it to juggle or tell jokes, or perhaps you'd show it how to give a hug or to cook a person's favorite food. There are lots of gifts you could give to this robot, but the reason why you would is so the robot could help people, perhaps even so that people would feel loved and valued. The skills and abilities are less important than why and how they are put to use. This is the final week of the Spirit Given series where Tim has been reflecting on Romans 12, thinking about the gifts of God's Holy Spirit for us, what they are, why we have them, and this week uh, we're thinking about how we should use those gifts. If you want to catch up, you'll be able to see all three talks on the St Peter's YouTube channel. For those who weren't here or for the young people, the Apostle Paul talks in the Bible about God's Spirit giving his people gifts, things that we're good at to help and support those around us. It's not like being good at baking cakes, but rather being someone who loves feeding people and making them feel welcome in your home, hospitality. Not a good singer necessarily, but someone who uses that skill by maybe joining the choir so he or she can help everyone else worship God through song. And there's a selection of spiritual gifts mentioned in the Bible. You've got a handout of some of those and what they might look like when you use them. It's not a complete list. There are certainly gifts that aren't on the list, but a bit like the robot, there are lots of gifts we may have been given to help those around us. Now last week, Tim invited you to fill in this diagram to help you perhaps work out what spiritual gifts you might have. If you haven't done that, or if you struggled, I took some time to fill mine in to give you an idea of how it works. We're going to start actually with H. Looking back, I've realized that my heart or passion is helping people understand there's a better way, a better way for humans to live. Every job I've done, everything, every volunteering position I've had, this has been the driving force. Over time, my abilities have included these skills and talents. And my personality is generally outgoing, easygoing, but I do like order and systems. And over my 49 years, my experiences have generally fallen into these kinds of buckets. I actually did an online spiritual gift survey, and these were the ones that popped up for me. And I think they fit pretty well with the shape and suggest that maybe curate or house group leader, Sunday school teacher, perhaps chaplain, uh, might be some of, just some of the good ways that I can use the gifts that God has given me to help our community at St Peter's Church. Look, the system's not perfect, but filling it in certainly gave me an idea of the kinds of areas where I could focus when it comes to serving the church and helping the church reach out to the world. So this morning we're asking, how do we use our spiritual gifts? Well, look, here's the quick answer. Remember this if you don't remember anything else today. When we think we know what gifts God has given to us, we need to grow our gifts give our gifts all for God's gift who of course is Jesus and I'll explain that more as we go along and today we're going to be considering the last section of Romans 12 which you can find in your pew sheet but <clears throat> we'll also be referring to another well-known book and film actually. I wonder if you know what this picture is from. Of course it's The Wizard of Oz isn't it written by Frank L. Baum. For those who don't know it it's a really great story, actually, of a girl called Dorothy who's whisked away by a tornado from her home in Kansas in America to a magical land called Oz. She's desperate to get home again, to be with her friends and her family, and so makes a long and dangerous journey to the Emerald City to visit the Wizards of Oz, who, she's told, can get her back home to Kansas again. And along the way, she meets three other characters who she helps and then who all travel with her to meet the wizard too, in the hope that he can give them the gift of what they need. Now let's see if you can guess what the characters need. The three things are a heart, a brain, and courage. Who do we think needs the heart? Well, it's the Tin Man. And who do we think needs the brain? It's the Scarecrow. And the courage? Well, that's the lion. 
These three, these three have a desire for these gifts, to abil the ability to think, love and be brave. And just a bit like the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, he says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. And they are desiring gifts. So why are we thinking about the Wizard of Oz? Well, there are three things from this story that's going to help us to think about how we use the God, uh, God's gifts given to us by his Spirit. So the first one is the four grew their gifts by using them whenever they could. If you read the book or watch the film, you'll actually see that the characters wanted these certain gifts, these abilities from the wizard, but you know, they actually had them all along and they used them whenever they could. The scarecrow used his brain and thought over and over again about how to deal with difficult problems along the journey. The tin man was always speaking up to protect those he loved and cared for. And the lion was repeatedly brave when he needed to be along that journey. And Do Dorothy actually acted as a rescuer time and time again. And that was one of her gifts. If you remember what we read last week in Romans 12, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement if it is giving then give generously if it is to lead then do it diligently if it's to show mercy do it cheerfully there are lots of people in st peter's using lots of their gifts regularly but perhaps there are gifts that you haven't used or, or don't think about very often maybe that you'd like to develop so why not spend some time thinking and praying about what they might be not so you have to do more but rather so you're taking full advantage of the gifts and skills and abilities that god has given you so the second thing we can take from this story is that the four characters gave the gifts to each other as they journeyed together. They used them to serve one another. Whether thinking, caring, being brave or rescuing each other, our four heroes did it for the people that they were uh, with. They, were, they did it selflessly, they did it self-sacrificially. Paul says in the first letter to Corinthians chapter 14 that regarding spiritual gifts, everything needs to be done to build up, to edify the other people in the church. And as we journey together as a Christian community, we share our gifts with each other, and then we will be better and stronger together. In Romans 12, Paul writes that Christians should genuinely love and be devoted to their brothers and sisters. They should share with any of them who have a need. <clears throat> they should welcome them in their homes. They should live in harmony with them and socialize with other Christians, no matter what their background. It is impossible for you to be a solo Christian. Our God is three persons, a community. And Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, I am there also. Our gifts find their purpose in serving others and in helping other people use their gifts too. And finally, these characters, <clears throat> they were journeying to find actually only what Jesus can bring. The tin man wanted to love and be loved. Dorothy wanted to go home. The scarecrow wanted to understand and perhaps have peace of mind. And the lion didn't want to be afraid anymore. Our gifts are given to us by the spirit of Jesus Christ. And by growing in them and by giving them to others, serving others, we are becoming more like him and doing what Jesus would do. Remember that Jesus said in John 13, if you love one another by this, everyone will know you are my disciples, my followers, my students, my family. Like Dorothy and her friends, we are all on a journey of life, on a road to try and find what we're searching for. And of course, what we're searching for is Jesus, his love, his peace, his knowledge, his truth, and the Lord Jesus himself. Growing and sharing the gifts he has given each of us will mean the journey to our eternal home. We're we'll more gracious and kind and lovely and good and generous and peace-filled and joyful than anything we could do alone. Now, I want to tr stress one more thing. This is not about taking on more church jobs. This is about spending time with God, reflecting on what gifts he has given to you to help God's family and working out what that might look like. It might be the laying down of jobs that you have now and resting and recharging as you decide how best to share other g gifts with your church. It may mean picking up something that's new in the church. It may mean not doing anything for a while and growing a skill through training or practice. But regardless, it's about discerning, celebrating and growing and sharing the gifts 
the Holy Spirit has given every single one of us. In the Wizard of Oz movie, Dorothy tells her friends, back where I come from, there are people who do nothing all day but good deeds. Isn't that the kind of community we want to be? A community that others will want to join as well. A community where people are using their God-given gifts to serve others. Or put another way, here's the Apostle Paul again in Romans 12, verses 9 to 10. This is the message version. Love from the centre of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. All for the sake of Jesus. Amen.